Now today I thought we'd have a closer look at my microphone preamp that I've been talking about in the last couple of videos, uh, a brief look at, at the design, uh, some of the ideas behind it, and why I even bothered to do it to begin with. We'll start it by having just a quick look at the board, a quick little run through. Input signal comes in here. Uh, we have an input transformer, two to one step up. Little um, differential amplifier made from discrete transistors. We have um, uh, op amps. Uh, this is kind of the, the main one that drives the output stage, but it also drives back through here, providing negative feedback. This op amp here provides a DC servo to try and uh, cancel out any uh, DC offset in the input diff amp. Um, it also acts as a buffer for the meter output, which drives the meter circuit we've looked at in the previous video. Um, so a few weird things going on here. This little fella here is a thermistor. The precise reason why we have him and why he's bent over here next to the transformer will become clear, as all the purpose of this big capacitor here. Um, okay, so phantom power switch there, indicator LED, there's your gain control. Dual gang pot, that's unusual. Um, I have to explain the reasoning behind that. Um, these are the main DC blocking caps for that uh, gain control. It's got a 20 dB pad there, and that's basically it. I'll we'll just have a brief run through the schematic. Um, that's our input terminals there. Now we'll see that uh, there's our pad switch, and these are the resistors that make up that network, that 20 dB pad network. Um, the phantom power switch is here, and these are the two resistors that apply phantom power there, the 6.8K resistors. Okay, so there's our input transformer. That's a 2 to 1 step up, and that then applies the signal to our differential amplifier. Now this is using uh, complementary feedback pairs rather than single transistors, and this arrangement up here now, uh, to be honest, this probably is a bit pointless. These, um, this is a current source. This is a current source made from uh, three uh, JFETs in a Casco configuration. But to be honest, you could get away with a resistor um, because um, the voltage uh, dropped across those varies very little in normal operation doesn't really give you a whole lot. What it does give you is an excellent power supply rejection ratio. So um, it really wouldn't matter what the supply voltage was doing, uh, we'd be still be getting uh, a pretty constant current at these nodes here and here. Now, um, notice this current source here has a trim pot to allow you to adjust to try and get uh, the same amount of current flowing in these two legs there. This is our gain adjustment pot. As I noted earlier, that's a dual gain pot, and that also is where the negative feedback is being applied from here. So an unusual setup here whereby the, um, the amount of resistance in our negative feedback networks changes depending on our gain setting. This is kind of a cute idea, although it did cause me some problems in trying to get everything to be stable. Okay, those there are those giant electrolytics um, that serve to block any DC across here. Um, okay, so the output from our diff amp goes into this off amp here. And now this is interesting. So this is where we pick up our negative feedback from. Now, this is a balanced feedback arrangement. So at least across the audio band, we want to supply negative feedback to both of those in equal quantities. That means that one of them has to be inverted and the other one doesn't. So if you look at this, you'll see that this one, this op amp here is acting as a buffer while this one here is acting as an inverter. As an extra wrinkle, this op amp here, which is being used instead of an earth reference on that inverter, is acting as a DC servo, and that is the thing that cancels out any DC offset between the two sides of the differential amplifier. 
So we have a buffer here, an inverter here, and that provides our negative feedback to the respective legs of that. That's great. Now, this actually gets quite complicated because although it's all fine and dandy across the audio band, what you find is that the phase shift through this op amp here um, at frequencies not far above the audio band starts to imperil the stability of the whole thing. So what you need is you need to provide a low pass filter on that one so that as we get above the audio band the contribution of this one becomes less and less. That's still not enough to actually make it stable. So this network here is on the, uh, the leg which has the, uh, the non-inverting op amp. This one here basically uh, makes the, uh, the feedback on this side, which is, follow it through, follow it through, this side here, um, uh, become greater and greater as we uh, increase in frequency. So that we, we go from balanced feedback across the audio band to eventually up in the sort of several megahertz range where this one's doing nothing and this one is doing everything. Um, and because the phase shift through that non-inverting op amp is quite small. Because we have quite a big loop here. We've got, uh, we've got this diff amp, we've got that op amp there, and then we've got another op amp there, and that's quite a bit. Um, and so trying to get that stable is quite tricky. And that's the reason for this unusual network here. That I kind of discovered just through experiment. I mean, if you, if you look at what that would do, that would, it's a kind of a double, it's probably not what this does to the amplitude response that's really important though. I mean, one of the things is whenever you put a kink in the amplitude response, then you're shifting the phase response. And that's probably the reason why that actually works. What I found was that because of this technique here of applying the feedback through the uh, the gain control resistor. Um, that means that uh, you could quite easily get it uh, stable at one end of the, of the gain adjustment and, and unstable at the other. So it was a bit tricky. So I'm hopeful that uh, as built, it will actually be stable. Okay, so let's follow on to the output stage. Now, what we have here, we have this op amp here and this is a uh, BUF634 VHF uh, buffer, um, which provides us the drive capability to be able to um, drive that transformer. Um, that op amp on its own probably doesn't have the grunt. So, by, and by putting that in the, uh, the feedback loop, that just gives that op amp a bit of extra grunt. Um, but that's not the interesting part. And you'll see this, there's this thing here, there's that, that's that thermistor. What on earth is going on there? Okay, so what we've done in the way that we drive the output transformer here is that we're using a negative impedance converter in order to reduce the distortion that we're getting through that output transformer, particularly in the low frequencies. And this technique involves having a sense resistor which should be equal to the DC resistance of the transformer primary. And that, I believe, is this fella here. So the problem with this technique is that since the transformer winding is a copper wire, um, its temperature coefficient of resistance is that of copper, and it's a whole lot more than, and I think in the opposite direction <laughs> to that, of a metal film resistor. So the technique was to incorporate a thermistor in the resistor network that sets the gain of this op amp here. And if I've calculated this correctly, that should largely compensate for the temperature induced changes in the resistance of the transformer primary winding, I hope. Okay, apart from that, there's not much else going on. That's the uh, op amp buffer that drives the meter circuit and a little low resistor for the transformer. And there's our output terminals there. As to why I embarked on this project to start with, I guess it's one of those things where you, you follow the signal chain. Um, having uh, tinkered with microphones for a while, 
um, you just feel that uh, you need to uh, move on to the uh, the next step. And um, I think also teaching myself uh, a bit more about circuit design has been a bit of a bit of a bucket list thing for me. Uh, as, as a young man, I was uh, a little bit of an electronics enthusiast. Um, you know, built a few kits, um, had some understanding of what was going on, but didn't really um, didn't really get it. Didn't really design my own stuff. Just kind of built other people's stuff. And yeah, when I got back into electronics, maybe five years ago. I was just amazed at the resources that are that are out there, um, you know, the, the simulation packages and the, the easy availability of data sheets and parts and the ability to uh, get uh, circuit boards made relatively cheaply. And I just thought, yeah, this is something that um, that I need to do. So anyway, thanks for watching.